Hey guys, and welcome to The New Normal with me, Sarah Rott, where we sit down and talk about a various amount of topics. In today's episode, we're going to talk about tips for working at home, what video chat app does what, birthdays and quarantine, and a few top games of 2020. This isn't just staying home, this is The New Normal. Hi guys! Hey there, welcome! Welcome to my solo podcast where you're just stuck with me, Sarah. Yeah, G and I decided that even though our new way of doing Giovanni and Sarah in the morning podcast style is up and running again, we should still take a moment to have our solo projects. So hi, welcome to mine. Welcome to the new normal. It's uh, very nice. This is the first episode. So hi, guys. But in other news, Giovanni and Sarah in the Morning podcast style is up and running on the Griffin YouTube page. It's great. I really missed it. G has missed it. Usually, we were on Griffin Radio broadcasting from 10 to 11 o'clock or 12. And we played songs and we talked about all kinds of stuff. But due to the recent pandemic, we are forced to go on podcast. We're having a conversation on FaceTime, we're recording ourselves, and then we go back and we edit the conversations together. It's quite fun, it requires a little bit more work, but still all the fun of Giovanni and Sarah is still there from, you know, tag along words with Giovanni to us talking about trending topics or random things about our friends. It's all still there, just in a new format. So, I'm so happy it's back. I really do miss G. Uh, FaceTime is not enough. You know, humans require human connection. And I definitely miss G. Uh, We would drive to school every morning together. So it's a little bit weird not doing that anymore. (laughs) I, I miss it. I miss our mornings where we would sit in the car and listen to music and talk about random things and usually laugh our butts off over something random. And we'd discuss our show and figure out what we're going to do. If it was a Monday, we'd discuss, you know, what we'd do for that week. Or we'd discuss what we'd do for another week if it was another day. So it's quite weird not being with him all the time. Not seeing him every day. But we're managing. We're FaceTiming a lot. So it's good. It's okay. But back into... The reality of it. We are online. We are now considered a virtual campus. So now everything that we know from tutoring to counseling to admissions and records to classes to going to class is now online. And it's much different because now we're saying, what time do I have to be up so that way I can make my Zoom meeting? Or do I have a good enough Wi-Fi connection to be able to get on the Zoom meeting. It's quite different from what we normally know. Now, back before we were demanded to go online, we had the option to do classes online. You know, you got the option to say, okay, you know, you can't make classes today, do an online class. And what I remember from it is you could, you had assignments throughout the week, And you would do those assignments, and then you would turn it in on Saturday or Sunday night. And you'd have all this time. Well, now it's not quite like that. Now you're in class every day, you have assignments almost due every day. It's quite different. And, you know, usually these online classes were for general ed. Or, you know, a few classes in your major that you could get by by doing online. But... A lot of classes require actually being in class. Music, art, dance, theater, culinary. How are they adapting to these changes? Because usually if you go to an art class or a dance class and you're dancing wrong, your teacher can correct you. Well, now the teacher can only send out a video and can't correct how the student does it. I know music is doing classes where they all play online or the teacher asks them 
to record themselves and then send it to them, which then they put into a final product. But it's so weird how a lot of these majors are, co are doing it. So if you're a student in one of these classes, let us know how you're coping. Let us know what the teacher is doing so that way you can try to get, you know, your credit. Like here on Griffin Radio, we're used to being inside a studio. We're learning what buttons to press. We're learning how to turn the volume up, how to switch the music. You know, we have a stream of music that's going 24-7. And then we go in and we do the news and we have our, you know, our schedule of what to do, how to do it. But now we've all switched to online. So we're resulted into using our own microphones, our own computers, our own technology, and it's quite different than what we normally usually do. So let us know how you guys are doing with this, you know, if you are one of those majors that requires hands-on like radio. So now that we're online, you know, we aren't going to school every day. We're in the comfort of our own homes, which is a little bit difficult for some of us, me, because all we want to do is sit on our couch and watch our TV. I am one of those people who just want to sit around all day and not do my work. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I do it all the time. So what can we do in order to maintain a work schedule, a work school schedule, but at the same time in the comfort of our own home? Well, what they recommend is to get dressed. A simple but effective tool that we can all use to get ourselves up for the day. So you get up, you get dressed, you brush your teeth, you brush your hair. Zoom meeting or not, you know, if you do have a Zoom class, even more to do it because you don't want to look like you rolled out of bed. <laughs> you got into this mental headspace of, okay, it's a school day, it's a work day, I now have to do work. What they also recommend is is that you find a space in your house where you designate it only for school or work. So be it your desk, your kitchen table, somewhere where you can sit down and say, okay, this is my area of space. This is where I'm gonna do my schoolwork, where I'm gonna sit down on my Zoom lecture, where I'm gonna do everything. So you go to your Zoom lecture, you do your notes, you do your homework, you do everything that you can for that day, get it done, do half, do some tomorrow, whatever you're doing, you have a space to work. That way, for the next tip, it helps you turn off your work mode. So once you leave your desk or kitchen table or wherever you designated a place to work, you can go, okay, I'm done working for the day. You can push in your chair and you're out of your work mode and you're back into the state of, okay, I'm home, which then, you know, you can put your jammies back on, turn on the TV, relax, get something to eat if you weren't already snacking, you can relax. But make sure that you maintain regular hours. Yes, maybe you have to do something in the morning, but make sure that you designate a time where you go, okay, my Zoom lecture is this time, I'll do my notes after. Find a schedule instead of doing it all willy-nilly. That way you get into this headspace of, okay, this is my school time from this time to this time. And by this time, I'll be done with everything and I can do whatever I want. Another tip is to be positive. Yes, we are all struggling with this idea of being home, of having to work from home, school from home, cl class lectures that we don't want to attend because we're already home and we have to watch a screen with a professor. You know, I get it understandable but be positive like if you have a long commute ahead of you that you would usually take to get to school well instead of that you don't have to be up at eight o'clock to be there by nine you can sleep in another 10 minutes or you can have breakfast there's a lot more options for you then that way when it comes close to class time you can go okay i got 20 minutes I'll prepare for class, make sure that everything is working, so that way I'm on class, on time, and ready to go. So there's a lot more positives to it. Uh, you know, I understand that it's still being at home, but 
there's some good sides to it too. And the last thing they recommend is to take time for face-to-face -face communication. So yes, now that we're online, we're immediately going towards texting or calling. But it's good to have that face-to-face -face communication with your professor. So maybe after class, say, hey, professor, can we take 10 minutes to talk? If they have time, cool. If not, maybe they can schedule you for a different time. But make sure you maintain that face-to-face -face conversation. So continuing with this over-the-screen kind of talking, we are talking on multiple different platforms. We are trying to keep in touch, like I said before, with loved ones, with significant others, with friends. We're trying to keep that connection alive still, even though we can't see each other every day. So we're calling, we're texting, we're video chatting. We want to keep that human connection. We want to see each other, even though we really can't. So I went ahead and looked at a few video chat options to see their features and what they do with the help of Giovanni. Thank you, Giovanni. We went through and saw what does what. So the first one that we talked about was Zoom. Zoom is the biggest platform out there right now. Everybody's using it. It's good for a big group of people. So mainly classes or big families hosting up to a lot of participants. So Zoom. It's the widely popular host to millions of people working and studying at home during this outbreak. Whether you've been using it for years or have just signed up, there are fun tips and tricks and features that you can upgrade in your video chat experience. You can change your background. Instantly transport yourself to outer space or the beach or anywhere else. You can upload a photo and you can use that as your background. Some people might need a green screen, and other people might not need a green screen. Our professor, for example, he put the classroom behind him, or he put the station behind him to make it look like he was actually there when he wasn't. And it puts you in the space of, oh, I'm in the classroom. I'm at class. It's so fun. So you can mute your audio or your camera. You can unmute or mute with the space bar, you know simple things you can react with an emoji on screen you know if you're muted you don't want to talk you can just send a thumbs up or a clapping emoji so that way they know that you're listening but you just don't want to talk another cool feature you can do is you can turn on the gallery view that lets you see everyone in the meeting at once instead of the one person speaking and if you have a meeting of 49 or fewer attendees you can see them all displayed on one screen and if there's more of them, you can change between multiple pages by clicking the speaker view in the same top right corner. Something else that you can do is you can share your screen. So share your screen for Zoom is to watch a movie or play a game. You'll have the option to share your entire desktop or one of the windows you have opened. Teachers use this for lecture. Our teacher did this today where he opened the lecture on share the screen. And when you're done, you just click the red stop share button at the top of the screen to go back to your normal meeting. Another feature is you can turn on a beauty filter. It's called Zoom's Touch Up My Appearance. The filter aims to smooth over your appearance, making you look well rested. If you've ever used beauty mode on your phone selfie camera, you know what you're getting. To turn it on, click the up arrow next to the star video, click video settings, and under my video, check the box for touch up my appearance. Quite interesting, I never knew about that. Another feature that you may or may have not known about is to record the meeting on your computer. Both free and paid Zoom subscribers can record their meeting on their laptop or computer using the desktop app. Those files then can be uploaded to a file storage service such as Google Drive or Dropbox, or a video streaming service such as YouTube or Vimeo which I don't understand, but I guess maybe for YouTubers playing games or something like that. And it is not available on your phone unless you have a paid account. It can host up to more than 100 people. If you have a group or more than 100 people to host work or school, you can upgrade to a paid professional account. If you upgrade to the highest, you can host up to 1,000 participants. Wow, that, that's a lot. 
Our next contestant is Google Duo. Now, Google Duo is available as an app for your phone or on your laptop under the Google Home page. You just go to Google Apps in the little grid and you press on Google Duo. One cool feature about Google Duo is you can send a video message over a voicemail. With a recent update, Google Duo now instantly lets you send a video message right from the call screen. You can also send 30 second long video messages without calling the person by pressing and holding down the contact and selecting send video message and record a video clip. One of the most intuitive features of Google Duo is the knock knock who's there feature. It's giving you a preview of the person on the other side of the line calling you. So every time you receive a video call from a person who is already in your contact list, you'll be able to see a live feed from their camera onto your screen even before you accept the call. So, if it's your crush trying to call you from a friend's phone, there's plenty of time to tidy up before you answer the call. <laughs> oh, that's cute, aw. Some other features that G and I discovered playing on the laptop with it was you can change your view from landscape to portrait. You can also multitask. There is a little box at the top that says multitask. You press on it and suddenly your little FaceTime chat on the computer turns into a little box at the bottom and you can go on Google and you can do work and you can still have a conversation while talking. I noticed that it's a little bit fuzzy on the computer, but that might just be my computer, but it still has good quality for audio and video. And of course, like any other FaceTime app, you can mute it, you can not show your video. It has those key features, but also offers a little bit more. Now, there might be some confusion because there's also a feature of Google that's called Google Hangouts. Now, Google Hangouts is almost the same as Zoom. You see, Google Hangouts is more for meeting, more for business compared to Google Duo, which allows you to have more of a friendly feature. Hangouts is deeply integrated with G Suite, so you can manage and share documents right from that chat, so it'll be easier to find things quicker. So if you're looking for a Google Doc, you can easily send it to the rest of your team, and you can easily get what you're saying out of the way because you have it right there instead of looking for it and asking them to wait. Some other cool features to hang out is it can support up to 250 participants and 100,000 live stream viewers. Like a lot of the rest of video chatting, you can turn off your camera, mute your microphone, share your screen. The only problem, maybe it might drain your battery or your computer fan might kick in on longer calls. Also, your video might be a little grainy. If then, you can switch from a 720 stream to a 360 stream. Our next contestants are Instagram and Snapchat. Now on Instagram, you can have up to six people who you can video chat with and you can explore with a bunch of different filters. It also gives you the option to scroll down and let you browse Instagram at the same time you are video chatting. G and I had quite a lot of fun with this. The thing about Instagram though is that it requires you to directly DM the person before you can video chat. And they have to directly DM you back. It's a request. So if you ever try to do this with a celebrity and they never answered, this is why. You haven't had a conversation with them on DM. They haven't answered you back. Believe me, G and I have tried with Shane Dawson and we didn't get through to him. Sad face. <laughs> What I also noticed about Instagram, though, is that it's a split person screen, so you can see each other equally. Unlike other platforms like Google Duo, Messenger, or FaceTime, where the person that you're talking to is in a bigger screen compared to you in a smaller screen in the corner. Now, comparing that to Snapchat, Snapchat, again, lets you play with the filters and lets you snap people at the same time you're video chatting but it lets a few more people join. Snapchat can have up to 15 people in a video chat. What I also noticed in Snapchat is that Snapchat is quite, God, okay, guys, I've said quite like a lot of times in this podcast, oh my God, okay, no, sorry. <laughs> Snapchat has lower volume quality, so you have to turn up your volume a lot higher on Snapchat than you would on any other 
platform. The next platform that I looked at with the help of Giovanni was Facebook Messenger. Now, Facebook Messenger is common among Facebook, obviously. It's an app that lets you talk and text and video chat all in one. About a year ago, they made a version of it to anybody who doesn't have a Facebook account to have a Messenger account. That's actually how I joined my very first chat. Yeah! Denny's and Dragons! Woohoo! Shout out to anybody who remembers that. Guys! Yeah, that chat is dead now. <laughs> Wait, you know, hold on. Going on about this. Where did that come from? Where did it come from to say, oh, that chat is dead? Like, who invented that? I gotta find out more about that. Okay, guys, moving on. Going back into the video chat aspect of Messenger is it can be a little spotty. You can lose people, you can lose audio, you don't have to hear each other. Uh, other features include you are in a small box at the top or bottom, similar to Google Duo. And sometimes it can be hard to get everybody on one chat. Which reminds me of one night where G and I were trying to FaceTime the gang. So we call our group of friends the gang, and we normally do a FaceTime video. Well, one night, uh, we asked Ashley to join, and Ashley was like, yes, I'll join, absolutely. So Ashley asked me, are we going to FaceTime or what? So I go, okay. So I start the, I start the FaceTime video, and G comes on screen. And I go, hi, G. Hello. Hello. And he is not responding to me at all but I can see him. So he leaves and Ashley comes on and I'm like, Ashley, can you hear me? She can't hear me either. We are having so much trouble trying to get it to work. We can't hear each other, but we can see each other on screen. Finally, G switches to his phone. He goes, okay, I can hear and see you guys. Ashley gets it all taken care of. I make this joke of, okay, you know what? I'm never starting it again. Alex has to start these video chats because they never work. Because usually Alex starts the video chats and it works for him all the time. Well, us trying our own did not work. So Alex had problems. And then finally, when we got ourselves settled, we were waiting for one last member. We were waiting for Evan. Gosh darn it, you know, musicians always late. So he finally comes on. And we're like, yay, you joined. He can't hear us. He, can, he can't see us. His screen is completely black. Ashley's cuts out. G's cuts out. It doesn't work at all. Finally, we result into moving to Zoom, where it worked a thousand times better. But it's still one of the favorite stories that I have because we didn't know what was going on. <laughs> The last app I want to talk about for video chatting is FaceTime. Now, sorry everybody who doesn't have an Apple iPhone or iPad or computer. This is not for you. This is for the Apple iPhone users. Sorry guys, but I am a Apple owner. And G is also an Apple owner and we discovered that the sound and video is crisp. We could hear each other very well. It's quite interesting that you know, it was so good. And it reminds me of when me and the girls had a uh, FaceTime. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Kelly. Kelly's like, you never mentioned me. Kelly, you're mentioned. I love you. Okay. So me and the girls decided that we were going to have a FaceTime. Now, Ashley, I don't mean to call you out. You know I love you. But Ashley has an Android. But she does have an Apple iPad. So discovering that Messenger can sometimes be spotty, we decided that, okay, let's use another app. So we told Ashley that she was going to use Apple FaceTime, which, you know, was a little bit tricky for her, not being an Apple user compared to Kelly and I who have iPhones and Macs and iPads and know exactly what it is. But we had a session on FaceTime. The three of us, it was a little difficult getting on. Maybe it was our Wi-Fi, maybe it was us, we don't know. But we figured out how to add people, how to end it. 
the load time to get somebody on it can be spotty if you don't have good Wi-Fi. And also, it can, like, cut out here and there. But still, it's good. Uh, there's also effects. I think it's only for, like, the newer models of Apple, though, of iPads or iPhones or Macs, that you have the option to do effects. And you can, like, change the color. You can add emojis, memojis, and you can talk with the memoji. You know, all that kind of stuff. You know, so if I mention my friends, my friends who listen to these podcasts, you know, Giovanni, Ashley, Alex, Evan, Kelly... Uh, Just know that I am joking around and I'm just telling funny stories that I remember and that are good times to me. And I don't mean anything bad and I'm just joking around because I love you guys and I appreciate you guys listening to my podcast. And, you know, for the few of you who are listening, thank you. I appreciate it, especially when you listen to this podcast and I'm doing something else and you text me about it and I go, oh, yeah, that part. Thank you guys, you know, I do appreciate you listening to what I'm saying. And yes, everybody, that ends my uh, video chat uh, descriptions. You know, you guys can choose which one is the best. I just wanted to point out a few of them. Of course, you know, I may be leaving some out. I know that WhatsApp has the option, and there are a hundred different more that maybe you guys know. You know, guys, let us know. I know Microsoft has one. Guys, let us know if, you know, you know any more. Put it down in the comments. DM us. You know, come at me going, you forgot this product and make your point. Uh, But those are the only ones that I know about. I'm also investigating House Party. I haven't had the time to really invest in it and see what it's about. But I know that that one you can play games on. So I am in the midst of getting the gang to make accounts, and to log in on it and have a game night so I can tell you guys all about it. But until then, let's move on to another part of the show. So it's been nice these last couple of days. Uh, Earlier this week, or last week, it was gloomy and rainy. And guys, can you please stop? (laughs) uh, The gang is having a great time on the chat right now while I am working Guys, can you please tone it down? (laughs) I am trying to work. (laughs) So, it's not martial law, like I was saying, to go outside and enjoy the sunshine. You know, just go out into your front yard or your driveway and just stand out there or sit out there for a few minutes. Enjoy the sunshine. We really don't get to do it because we're always in school or at home or doing stuff, you know? So anyway, we're still in this pandemic. You know, it's still going on, and it's crazy to see how, like, I don't know, what are we, three, four weeks into this whole thing, and grocery stores still don't have toilet paper or hand sanitizer, or you find them in random places like Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's, I heard, is well-stocked and up-to-date, and it's good, so maybe if you need to go there for any essentials, go to uh, Trader Joe's, but... What, from what my dad has told me, I haven't left the house in three weeks. It's been quite a problem. Is that some grocery stores have long lines outside them of people because they're trying to keep that six feet apart distance. So some people are forced to wait outside, which is quite crazy to see when you drive by and you see this long line of people waiting outside. Uh, another thing I heard is that in L.A., that usually experiences a lot of traffic, well, their traffic has started to tone down and the busy highways have become free. I also heard that there's less pollution a lot of places, which is, you know, less gas, less pollution, you know, fresh air. So, you know, Mother Earth sounds like it's healing itself while we're in this pandemic. So that's kind of a positive to look at. Moving on in my weird rant of this podcast that you guys signed up for (laughs) is I want to talk about birthdays in quarantine. You know, ever since March where, you know, we were told, hey, it's best to stay home, to reduce the spread, you know, flatten the curve, that you guys should stay home. Well, then a lot of places got canceled and a lot of birthdays that were once, 
you know, excited to celebrate can't be celebrated anymore. So anybody born in March, happy late birthday. For anybody born in April, happy late birthday or happy early birthday or happy birthday if you're listening to this on your birthday. Who knows? Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But, and I guess May, I guess I'm going to be spending my birthday in quarantine. I don't know. I hope not. But I might. So the coronavirus is a party pooper. People are trying to celebrate their birthdays, but social distance won't let them. No more hugs, no more kisses. All they get is a be- couple of best wishes over the phone, but that's it. But when I was doing this research for the quarantine birthdays and what to talk about, I found an interesting article that talks about how a lot of birthdays were celebrated. So, like, a lot of people wrote signs that said happy birthday and they put them on the windows outside of somebody's home or they drove by and they honked their horns. Another funny one that I found is a family made somebody a toilet paper cake and chocolate poop. Yes, guys, that's how to spend your birthday in quarantine. I feel that's what everybody needs on their birthday is a toilet paper cake to celebrate the shortage of toilet paper in 2020. Another idea that someone put together is they made their wife a pillow fort and they put all kinds of lights and blankets and they watched a movie together. That was sweet. That's a way to spend your birthday. Uh, One that I found very, very amusing is that a girlfriend found out that a boyfriend can have his friends over for his party. So she brought out the Halloween decorations. (laughs) She brought out the skeletons and the witches and everything else. And I don't think her boyfriend approved of the guests. You know, another option for this quarantine birthday is to have all your friends gather on Zoom. Like we talked about earlier, there's many different platforms. Get on Zoom or Facebook or whatever and just have a little party. Have them sing happy birthday to you. And that way you can see everybody from a good social distance, but at the same time, you get to celebrate with your friends. And maybe one of the last things that you can do is have a virtual birthday party on your video games. Yeah, if you guys have The Sims, like I do, I will tell you later about my experience with The Sims, you guys could have a birthday party on The Sims, or maybe Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing has a way to celebrate birthdays. If you guys have Animal Crossing, celebrate your birthdays on there. I know guys, these are weird times and we're getting used to this new normal of flattening the curve. Or if you're an essential worker, going out and working and wearing gloves and masks. You know, thank you to all who are following the rules and staying home. Thank you to the essential workers for doing your part in the community. Thank you to everybody who's doing their part. You know, like it said a thousand times before, make sure you're washing your hands, make sure you sanitize stuff, wearing mask and glove when you go out, follow the rules, and like said before, it's an old saying, but it's got to get worse before it gets better. Sad, but true. For anybody who was affected, any families or people listening to this, you know, we feel for you, you know. We hope that you're doing better. Our prayers are with you. You know, you, we're going to get through this. Some way or another, we're going to get through this and we're going to survive. And we're going to look back at this with our kids in 20 years. And they're going to go, guys, I'm bored. I want to go somewhere. And you can look at them and you can go, I didn't go anywhere for a whole month. I had to stay inside and I had to go and wipe my butt on the front lawn uphill both ways in the snow (laughs) if anybody knows where that reference is from it's a very old reference that parents used to tell their kids like when they would misbehave my parents used to tell me when I didn't want to go to school they told me that they walked to school uphill both ways in the snow with no shoes (laughs) guys try to see the positive to it You know, I know there's a lot of negative, but seeing the positive can really have a good influence on your life. Anyway, moving on. So what have I been up to? Well, not much. I mean, besides homework and recording for all of you, I have been playing the video game The Sims. 
So I got The Sims because I was really, really bored. And I'm like, okay, I'm in quarantine. I need something to do when I don't want to work. Because usually, all the time, I don't want to work. So, you know, I've had some problems with it. It hasn't been really the best because I'm just now figuring it out. My Sims have died twice. So that's great. I've had to remake them three times now. So that's awesome. So it's a lot of fun in one way and a pain in the butt in the other, but I'm enjoying it. I think I just have to figure it out, and once I figure it out, I'll be able to get through it and get by it. And pretty much just staying home, you know, talking to G, talking to the gang. I've been keeping warm. It's been cold up here in Julian. Uh, the nights are freezing, and it's crazy, and I don't like it, but... You know, I've been watching movies. I've been watching a lot of movies on Netflix and TV. We have the channel Epics. Uh, it's free right now for our Dish account. So we've been so my mom and I have been watching a lot of movies on there. We watched Rocket Man the other day, so now I have Elton Elton John song stuck in my head. I watched Justice League for the first time. It was quite funny. I liked it. I am more of a Marvel person. But it was a pretty darn good movie. As for other things going on in my life, I am still somewhat interning. So if you guys have listened to Giovanni and Sarah in the Morning, or if you're just now listening now, I work for a radio station, 91X, Z90, and Magic 92.5, as an intern. And G works there, Nicole works there, and we all intern and we would go out and we do these events and we work with other people and we do office work and since this pandemic has gone on we're not able to do that the place is too small for everybody to be in it you know you already have the djs the people who work there full time the leads so every so it's a really tight packed space so when this happened you know, our supervisor called us and said, hey, you know, you guys are on hiatus until for further notice. And we're like, okay. So finally, when we we're supposed to go back to work, this whole thing was still going on. So he decided, our supervisor, that we were going to do some online stuff. So in the midst of this, Gian, Nicole, and I are going to work on a podcast for the station and turn it into him. I think he just wants to know about our podcasting skills. And luckily, I'm already talking to you guys, so I already know what I'm doing. Kind of, sort of. I already know how to edit and everything. So it should be really good. You know, we're working on it slowly but surely. And how it's going to go. And it'll be quite interesting. But, yeah, it's really weird interning from home. You know, you're not getting that same experience. I loved working there. You know, G would drive me up on Wednesdays, bless his heart. He's going to listen to this and be all like, oh, it's no problem. But no, it was a really big deal. I thought of it, it was a really big deal. Anyway, so yeah, so I definitely miss interning with G, with Nicole. You know, I miss the leads there. You know, they don't, they don't talk to me. So I wonder, I hope they're doing good. You know, I hope everybody is staying safe and wearing masks or whatever, and they're doing good. So moving into my next topic, I want to talk about video games. Now, since we're home, if we choose to, we have the time to play video games. If we are that kind of person, either on Nintendo, PS4, Xbox, whatever platform you have, we have the opportunity to play them now. So a couple of video games that are popular in 2020, for one, is Animal Crossing. Now, I know this has been a big thing. Animal Crossing has been a big thing for many years, and when Nintendo brought it out for the Switch, it was a big hit. So Animal Crossing is a social simulation video game developed and published by Nintendo. In the game, the player is a human who lives in a village inhabited by various animals, carrying out various activities such as fishing, bug catching, and fossil hunting. Since its initial release in 2001, Five Animal Crossing games have been released worldwide, one each for Nintendo 64, the GameCube, Nintendo DS, Wii, Nintendo 3DS, and the Nintendo Switch. The series has been both critically and commercially successful and has sold over 30 million units worldwide. I could not explain that 
in the first episode of Giovanni and Sarah. But now I explained it. I think that was more for me than you guys. So obviously, doing a podcast, it requires a lot of work. So I just want to take a minute to express my mistake, because this is the funniest mistake that's ever been. I was just trying to read that to you guys when I had a helpful person help me. The series has been both critically... Seriously? I'm on it. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat what you said? Really, Siri? I didn't call for you. Good old Siri, am I right, guys? I guess Siri and Siri's sound the same, so I guess she turns on. Hey, Siri! Yeah, that's right, I just enabled everybody's Siri. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Alright, no more of that. Siri, you had your time in the spotlight. Thank you very much. So going back into what I was talking about, obviously Animal Crossing is a very fun, lighthearted, fun game compared to the next game that I want to talk about. And the next game I want to talk about is in the Resident Evil series. So the game is a survival horror game developed by Capcom Production Studio 4 and published by Capcom. The player controls the on-screen character from a third-person perspective to interact with the environment. And to advance, the player must explore their surroundings while avoiding outsmarting and defeating monsters. These games were made in the 90s and then remade in 2002 and onward. And if you're sitting there and you're going, wait, aren't these movies? Yes, they are movies. They were based off the games. So the games came out first and then they made the movies. Also, there's apparently comic books. So that's interesting to learn. So why I bring this up is because in April of this year, the game developers decided to release the remake of Resident Evil 3. So the original game came out in 1999, and the story is still the same. You follow Jill Valentine and Carlos Oliveira as they attempt to survive a zombie apocalypse while being hunted by the intelligent bioweapon nemesis. So while you play the game, I watched this all unfold on YouTube in a couple of my favorite YouTubers' videos, is the stories interline with each other. So, game before, Resident Evil 2, which came out last year, there's a couple of places that you go through that you were played mostly in Resident Evil 2. Also, you find out the backstory for some of the characters in Resident Evil 2. So, Resident Evil 3 is one of the most popular games of 2020. And since we're on this survival horror game, I just want to pay tribute to a game that might not get its spot in the sun in 2020. So in 2013, a game came out called The Last of Us. And it's about Joel, a smuggler tasked with escorting a teenage girl Ellie across post-apocalypse United States and played from a third-person perspective. This game is very heart touching, you know, very has a lot of heart in it, very cute, very exciting, a lot of action. The art style is beautiful. In 2014, Naughty Dog and Sony, the game developers, came out with a remastered version that had more camera movement, more gameplay for fans, and fans went nuts over it. You know, I highly recommend, you know, maybe if you don't play video games, but Find somebody on YouTube who played it because I highly recommend that you watch this video game. This video game is very, very good. Anyway, moving into what I want to talk about. Naughty Dog and Sony decided to give fans of The Last of Us a part two. Ellie has grown up. Joel is grown up. Everything has come back five years later, I believe. And we were so excited to hear about this. They released trailers. They released conferences. And it was supposed to come out in 2020. Well, due to the coronavirus, Naughty Dog and Sony released on April 2nd that the game was delayed indefinitely and that there was no release date yet scheduled. However, you heard it here first, folks. A screenshot from Amazon's Italy, The Last of Us Part 2 pre-game page, showed release date for June 26, 2020, just one month after the previous date of May 29th. That's really interesting, but it could be photoshopped, it's just a rumor, but for now we don't know when The Last of Us 2 will come out, so we are waiting till then. 
And guys, that's all I have for my video game segment. Maybe I'll make this a segment and come back each week and talk to you guys about the newest video games out or what I've seen on YouTube. Who knows? But I just thought this was very interesting. You know, these are games that I like, so I thought I'd share it with you. I know it's not ideal to maybe talk about the zombie apocalypse in the midst of our pandemic, but you know, if you watch these games and stuff does happen, well, you know how to fight. <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. We're fine, okay? Nobody's turned into a zombie. You know, knock on wood, nobody does turn into a zombie. I doubt it. It's just a reimagined version of a game. There is no zombie apocalypse going on or that will ever happen. Okay, guys, now that I talked about video games, why don't we talk about movies and talk about what's coming new this week? So on Netflix, Despicable Me is coming. Fairy Hexagon Season 2 and Fonda Season 3, both Netflix originals. Hail Caesar, Gem and the Holograms. Also, The King, Internal Monarch. The Last Kids on Earth, Book 2. That's a Netflix family special. Also, Too Hot to Handle. Also, the last thing coming out this week is The Green Hornet. Ooh. That's interesting. Have you guys ever watched The Green Hornet? I watched it once and I was not a fan. But maybe you guys can watch it and tell me what you think. So on Hulu, they recommend that you watch this new movie, Parasite. So if you guys remember, Parasite was one of the movies that won a Golden Globe and was one of the best movies that everybody wanted to see. So now if you want to see it, you can see it on Hulu. Also new movies coming this week is A Teacher and The Messenger. Also, Harry Benson, Shoot First. Also for TV, What We Do in the Shadows, Season 2, The Masked Singer, Sing Along Spectacular, and Miss America, Season Premiere. Ooh, interesting stuff to Hulu this week. And as for Disney+, Plus, I know that Onward is on there. It came directly from theaters. It's a very cute movie if you guys are interested. And if you guys have Disney+, Plus, I recommend that you watch it. You know, speaking of Disney+, Plus, I mentioned earlier in this podcast how much of a huge Marvel fan I am, and I watch DC. Well, on Disney+, Plus, there are some new Marvel shows coming out this year and probably next year. Uh, in August... The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is supposed to come out, and I am super excited. I also heard that Black Widow might come directly on Disney Plus, like Onward did, due to, you know, theaters being shut down, and we don't know how long they're going to be shut down, that it may just come directly to Disney Plus, so I'm waiting on that. But it's very exciting. You know, I've been a big fan of Marvel for a couple of years. I got other people into Marvel. So I'm excited to see what happens. You know, I'm excited for the world to open up. I'd rather go see it in theaters than being at home. But, you know, whatever happens, happens. So, moving on to my last segment that I want to talk to you guys about. I want to talk about school. So, if you guys are interested in any of the programs that's happening around Grossmont. You know, G did a very, very good job of, you know, saying what's going on, what scholarships you can get. So if you guys want to go check out him on his podcast, it's right here on the Griffin Radio channel. You know, just look up G-Man podcast and, you know, check out what he has to say. He did a very good job at explaining the Grossmont stuff. You know, as we transition we have people who are transferring out, graduating, and we have new people coming in. So, you know, as for the new students who are coming in, you know, congratulations, you know, you're, you're at Grossmont, if you're doing this as a stepping stone, or if you're getting an education here, it's wonderful, you know, welcome to our campus. I hope a new student, maybe who listens to this, or in the future might listen to this, you know, welcome to Grossmont, you know, I hope that you're part of the Griffin Radio program, I hope that you guys are doing this, and you're back in the studio, and you're learning all how to do everything. We've had a lot of questions about how to do stuff, and i just like to point out that we have a wonderful counseling program that allows help for students who don't know what's going on, 
So if you're a new student, I highly recommend that you go talk to one of them. There's also Via Rapida, which is a peer mentor support system, which is very, very helpful. They help new students all the time. You know, Manny, he's a part of that. Sharice was a part of that at one time, you know, so they can also help you out. You know, I understand that Griffin Radio is a news source, but we don't know everything. We can only refer you to specific departments, you know, because every department does their job to make sure that our school is up and running. So guys, before I go, I just want to give some shout outs and some thank yous. You know, thank you to our essential workers who are working, who are in the stores, who are delivering mail, who are in hospitals, nurses, doctors, you know, a big shout out to you, a big thank you for risking your lives for us. You know, thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. I also want to say thank you to you guys for anybody who is following the rules and staying home and flattening the curve. You guys are doing a great job. You know, we'll stick through it. You know, make sure you keep yourself busy with school. I hope school is going well for all of you. I hope you're doing good. Thank you to the people who are giving out food. You know, if you're a lunch lady or if you work in a restaurant, you know, thank you for making our food, for delivering it, for being able to still provide food in this crazy time. Guys, it's really important that we help small family services or f small family diners, you know, eat local. Help them out. I understand that you want a McDonald's burger every once in a while, but there are other places that make good food that are trying to survive, so we should always support them. Also, guys, make sure that if you have any grandparents or elderly people in your life to check on them, to make sure that they have everything they need. If they're going out, you know, make sure that they're safe and they're doing what they can and they're staying home and they're staying healthy. Thank you to all our professors who are doing schoolwork. You know, I know this isn't easy. I know our radio professor is having quite a time right now, you know, figuring out how to do it, you know, where to do it in his house, because his wife also teaches at the school. So, you know, shout out to the teachers who are doing what they can. You know, we appreciate you so much. Lastly, I just want to say thank you to my Griffin team, the Griffin Radio people who I work with all the time. Guys, you're doing a great job. You're doing great. I'm really happy that we're doing this and we're doing something. You know, thank you to G, who has been doing the news, who has helped me edit, who has helped me, you know, like, do a bunch of stuff. Thank you to Sharice for helping me edit. You know, thank you to Nicole and Manny and Marquise and Israel and Antonio and Thomas and Daniela for giving us the content that goes right here on Griffin Radio you know, for listening to their podcast. Uh, Nicole, Manny, and Daniela have a podcast. G has a podcast. Marquise has a podcast. You know, go hang out with him. Listen to Israel's podcast. He's he's a natural. I like listening to his bass. You know, and thank you guys for doing it. You know, we survived the first week last week. We're doing it again. You know, we're doing it over and over. We're surviving. You know, we're making content for you guys. So, you know, thank you to anybody who's listening and who's enjoying it. You know, we're making it for you. As for me, that's about it. So thanks, guys, for listening to my one hour of randomness. I hope you guys tune in next week to hear my babbles and hear what I have to talk about next. Hopefully some good stuff. And make sure you tune in to Giovanni and Sarah. We have a lot of good stuff coming. We have a lot of ideas, you know, we're making it work, like I said earlier. So I'm excited to see what happens. So thanks guys, you know, you can like, subscribe, and tap that bell button for all the newest content to hear when we update and what's going on. Also, we post on our social medias all the time. So you'll always know when a new video is up if you follow our social medias. You can find us on Instagram at Griffin Radio SD. You can follow us on Facebook at Griffin Radio SD. Or follow our Facebook page, Griffin Radio 119. Or you can find us on Twitter at G Radio SD. Yeah, guys, we're on all platforms. 
Or you can just click here to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Whatever you prefer, guys, just make sure that you'll always have a link on each of the social medias to get to us, or if you just want to search us up on YouTube, whatever you guys want to do, you know, make sure you tune in to everybody else's content. They're doing a great job. So I will talk to you guys next week, and you will hear me and Giovanni and Sarah in the morning, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye! This was Sarah Rott, and you are listening to The New Normal. See you next week, guys!